ETM Hotel, Rennie Sean. Welcome in peace. My name is Sean. Just want to uh, go live real quick, man, impromptu, and get into this build about who are the men day. So without further ado, uh, I'm not going to waste too much time uh, saying anything. I'm just going to get right into the build. So uh, who are the men day? They're one of the two largest ethnic groups in Sierra Leone. The neighbors, the Timney people, have roughly the same population. The Mende and the Timney each account for slightly more than 30% of the total population. The Mende are predominantly found in southern province and the eastern province, while the Timney are found primarily in the northern province and western area, including the capital of Freetown. Some of the major cities with significant Mende populations include the Bo, the Kenema, the Kelahun, and the Moyaba. Now, the Mende belong to a larger group of Mende peoples who live throughout West Africa. The Mende are mostly farmers and hunters. During the Civil War, the Civil Defense Force, CDF, militia group was uh, founded by Dr. Alpha Lavelli, a Mende himself, to fight the rebels along with the government troops. The forces included five groups drawn from all major ethnic groups in the country, Tamboros, Hunters, Donso, Capras, and the Kamajos. Kamajo is a Mindy term for Hunter. They were not only the dominant wearing factions, but the most fearful among the CDF militias headed by a late Deputy Minister of Defense, Chief Hinga Norman. To date, the Kamajos are under among the elite groups of men and women who fought to restore democracy in modern Sierra. Leon. The Mende are divided into uh, Kappa Mende, who are predominantly in the south, in Mayamba district, the Gola Mende. From the Gola forest between Kanima and the Pehuyin districts to into Liberia, a national reservation landmark, Siwa Mende, who settled among the Siwa River, via Mende, also in Liberia and Pejun district. Sierra Leone and the Cajo Mende, who are dominant tribe in the Calhoun district, with the Kisi, Ngisi, and the Gambandi, both of whom are Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Ghana. Ghana. Now, the Secret Pole Society is for men, while the Sande Society is for women, both of whom initiate the young into adulthood. Those who join either the male or female secret societies are referred to as the Halimo, are members of the Hale or secret societies of the Kapoa or are people who have never been initiated into the Hale. The men, they believe that all humanistic and scientific powers pass down through the secret societies. The Mende language is widely spoken in Liberia, more so in areas once considered part of Liberia. In the year 1984, then President Samuel Doe threatened to retake the part of Sierra Leone that was once Liberia. Both countries have Mende, Gola, Vai, Gisi, and Gambandi tribes. Both the Mende are the dominant populations. Mende names are common in Liberia, including towns, uh, towns that share names on both sides of the border. For example, Guma Mende is a popular section in Leofa, Liberia, and those living along the borders claim dual citizenship. The Mende speak the Mende language, among themselves, but their language is also spoken as a regional lingua franca by members of smaller Sierra Leone ethnic groups that inhabit the same part of the country. Their language is spoken by around 46% of Sierra Leone's population. Like a majority of African nations, Sierra Leone political parties are often tied to specific ethnic groups and have been dominated by the Mende on the one hand and the Timne and their longtime political allies, the Limba, on the other. The Mende are known to typically support the Sierra Leone People's Party, SLPP, while the Timnes and the Limbas are associated with the All People's Congress Party, the APC. Now, the Mende is a major language in Sierra Leone, with some speakers in neighboring Liberia. It is spoken by Mende people and by other ethnic groups as a regional lingua franca in Sierra Leone. Now, Mende is a tunnel language belonging to the Mande branch of the Niger-Congo language family. 
early systemic descriptions of Mende were by F. W. McGoy and Kenneth Crosby. In 1921, Kasimi Kamara invented a syllabary for Mende he called Kikaku. The script achieved widespread use for a time, but has largely been replaced with an alphabetic base on a Latin script, and the Mende script is considered a failed script. The Bible was translated into Mende and published in 1959 in Latin script. The Latin based alphabet, which is your A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, and the Mende has seven vowels, which is A, E, uh, another little E that looks like a th backwards three, a I, O, a backwards C, and a U. Now, Mende was extensively in the movies Amistad and Blood Diamond and was the subject of the documentary film, The Language You Cry In. Okay, let's move on. Linguistic affiliation of the Mende. Now there's different reports that list different, uh, different uh, difference between 15 and 20 different ethnic groups. So this is a discrepancy, not so much as to whether a certain group of people exist or not but rather local dialects once spoken continue to be mutually distinct in the face of population, uh, population expansion, intermarriage and migration. For example, the two largest ethnic groups, the Timni and the Mindy, each comprise about 30% of the total population that have come to absorb many of their less populous neighbors. For instance, the local people, while admit to being heavily culturally influenced by the Timni people surrounding them, the Krim and the Gola by the Mindy and so on. In addition, there are a number of people of Lebanese descent whose ancestors fled Turkish per, uh, persecution in Lebanon and in the late 19th century, while each ethnic group speaks its own language. The majority of the people speak either Mende, Timne, or Creole. The official language spoken in schools and government administrations is English, a product of British colonial influence. It is not unusual for a child growing up to learn four different languages, that of the parents ethnic group, a neighboring group, Creole and English. Symbolism. To some extent, symbolic imagery is regionally based. People from the Western area often associate the tall uh, cotton tree, white sandy beaches or large natural harbor with home. People from East often think of coffee and cocoa plantations, yet the palm tree and the rice grain of national symbols par excellence and cocoa plantations. Yet the palm tree and the rice grain are national symbols par excellence immortalized in currency, song, and folklore, and the value for their central and staple contributions to everyday life. Different species of palms contributed to cooking oil, thatch roofs, fermented wine, so fruits and nuts. Perhaps the only thing more important than palm tree is rice, the staple food, usually eaten every day. It is often hard to, uh, for outsiders to grasp the centri uh, centrality of rice to daily existence in Sierra Leone. Many people, for example, have over 20 different words to describe rice in its variant forms, such as separate words for sweet rice, pounded rice, and the rice that sticks to the bottom of a pot upon cooking. So Mindy belongs to a Niger Congo language family. Sometimes it can be called Baumpe, Hulu, Kosa, or Kusa. It has several dialects such as Kapako, Wanjama, and Sawawa, but most of them are intelligible by the Mindy because they have 92% to 98% lexical similarity in each other. Appreciate everybody tuning in right now. I just wanted to set the stage for the conversation uh, based on what I just read. So now I will share my screen and elaborate. For any, any source information, I'd be glad to share it with you, but I will put it in the description after this particular presentation. Hold on one moment for me. Where Elijah at? Okay, take him where Elijah at.
All right, so y'all can see my screen. Cool. Okay. First thing I read from was a wiki article, then I went to the coach of Sierra Leone, and then now I'm at the PDF format for the Mende people. One that you can find online and you could actually uh, download. There's been this entire argument that the Mende are, um, are from the Western world. So I want to know how they, how, uh, or if the language of these people actually appear in the Americas. So while y'all are looking in my screen, we're looking at the Mende, right? This is a Mende woman right here. More than likely, she's, she's probably been initiated in, into the secret society. Um, like I said earlier in the opening or the introduction, I named the Sunday and the Poro, right? Which are the two main uh, secret societies among the Mende. So that would mean, culturally speaking, that they would have a rites of, rites of passage. Uh, they would have some type of um, role or influence, culturally speaking, from an artistic perspective. And then we would see this particular Niger Congo language phallum that would show up in the Americas. So let's deal with the art. Here we have images of the Mende, right? Now Kofi and I have already done presentations on this particular thing, but you know, hey, people act like we don't exist, so we're gonna deal with it. We're not using lookership. These are the Mende people. Right there, Sunday. Here she go. She's wearing that, that great mask. Right. If you want more information on this particular uh, mask, it's fine. We got it. It's on the Monster Warrior Clan channel. Here are some initiates. These young ladies are going through their rites of passage. Right. They're led by. Ta-da. So I'm not. Here we go. Here go to history. And the Mende language is related to the Mende language group, indicating that the Mende migrated from the Sudan to the north. The oral traditions of the Mende tell a peaceful migration into the area that have spawned the period from 200 to 1500 AD. Culturally and physical differences among the Mende suggest that immigrants have originated from more than one source. This could also be a result in a marriage with the peoples who had already lived in the area Artistic traditions link them closely to the coastal Balam people, a phenomenon which most likely resulted from the Mende growing ideas they found to be useful in their own societies. Sean, why are we even discussing the, the, the Mende people? Well, for the last, over the past 24 hours, I've heard a lot about this Mende Angola or uh, Angola claim that Angola is in Indiana and the Mende is fake, some little fake history. So what people really don't know that the Mende are part of the Sierra Leone. That's why I started out and I opened up with, with all of that information that came from the article, because it's just that simple. However, I do want to say, if these people are from this part of West Africa, you see where that dot is, then when we get to the Americas, we should see the Sunday, we should see faces like this, mask like this. We should see that language family like this, and we should see other cultural practices that I did not want to get into yet, which would deal with foods. All right. So let's take a look. Come in. Mende in North America. We're doing this live. Okay, so the weekend article don't take us anywhere near North America, trust me. If y'all want to see it, I already have it right here. You can scroll down. Let me go back. There it is. If you want to affiliate the Mende to anyone, you can affiliate the Mende to Liberia, Sierra Leone and Liberia, right? 
So if any American influence or any ties to America, they're going to go from there. So y'all want me to do this? Here we go. I'm gonna skip this top part and I'm gonna go on down right here. Y'all see this is talking about Amistad, right? So I'm gonna skip Amistad. I'm specifically looking for the poor roll of the Sunday in the Americas. Because they're going to take their culture with them. They've been practicing this stuff for a long time. They're going to take it with them. They ain't going to lose it. Language, none of that. Because they can speak four language. They're taught this to this day. So I ain't getting none of this. Look at these people. Look at this. Initiates. Two girls. They got their white on. They purifying. They ready to go through. They ready to get their thing done. Yep, there's that thing. People don't like female generation. Genotype mutilation. Yep. I went through a little bit of politics. See, we ain't going to get nowhere. We're not going to get to the Americas that way. So we got to do it this way. Let's see. Sierra Leonean Americans. Let's see if we can find this. They claim the Mende language is, is with the down somewhere around here. So we should find it. So Sierra Leonean Americans are Americans who are descended from Sierra Leone. The population of Sierra Leone Americans is relatively large and consists, according to surveys of 2013, 21,538 people. However, many African Americans are descended also from Sierra Leone slaves who were exported to the United States since the 18th and into the 19th century. So the number of peoples with the heritage should be much, much higher. So the number of slaves from present Sierra Leone exported to present United States exceeded the 25,000 people. A peculiar group of people of partially Sierra Leone descended in the United States is that of the Gullah, who descended of slaves, fled their uh, owners at the end of the 18th and 19th century and established in parts of South Carolina, Georgia, and the Sea Island areas in which even today they retain their cultures. Moreover, according to American Community Survey, there are 34,161 Sierra Leone immigrants living in the United States. So the, the thing just talked about 18th and 19th century. Right? Y'all can get this article. You can look it up if you want to dive deeper into this. My only interest is to find where these people are talking about this Mende language being here way before all this 18th and 19th century. If black people were already here, right? We got to find them. Let's find them. We got to find these people. That's art. I don't want to deal with that. We don't want to deal with this. We already ran into art. Don't want to deal with Cory Booker. Learning out who he is. I'm telling y'all right now, we're not going to find them. We can deal with this, but we already know all about this. We know about European contact in the 15th century with Africans, West Africans specifically. If the Mende culture, Mende people, Mende language is here in the Americas, then we need to see the artistic expression, the foods and traditions and customs. 
We need to see them. Please. Let me check the chat. I wasn't intentionally trying to let you see when I started reading. All right, let's go to work. Mende does not share the morphology characteristics of most of the Niger Congo family, such as the now class system. Leach regards it as an early branch that, like Ejoy and perhaps Dogon, diverged before it developed. Dwyer, 1998, compared it with other branches of Niger Congo and finds that they form a coherent family, with the Mende being the most divergent of the branches he considered. However, Demondal 2008 argues that the evidence of inclusion is slim with no evidence for decades. And for, uh, for now, Monday is best considered an independent family. Most internal Monday classifications are the base lexical stat statistics and the results are unreliable based on the Swedish list. For the following classifications of uh, Kastenholz, is based on lexical innovations of comparative linguistics. Details of East Monday are from Dwyer, summarized in the Williamson and Bleach 2000. All right, so we're dealing with the Monday. Here go a chart. Let's see if this chart takes us to the Americas. Mm, east, South, no, 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 no. West Monday, Central, Northwest, North Proper, Southwest, Central. No, 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 no. Languages in Nigeria. We ain't got to get too far into that because we ain't talking about Nigeria. My purpose is to find the Monday people in the Americas in the 15th century. That would also mean that we would need that language. We would need their culture, the Sunday and the Poro. We would need to understand, we would un need to see what they were practicing in the area and all of that. Here we go. Cognates, here are some cognates from Dwyer Anybody familiar with the language, uh, the linguistic arguments of Asar and other people? Here are cognates. And what they did was give us the translations and then they will run the cognates all the way through. So here go the English meanings of each word and here go the cognates of the Monday. Here we go. There go the comparatives. See that? Comparative linguistic work. So all these words right here, cognates. I'm not no professional with this. Just telling you like it is. We at the bottom. Okay, so we know that the Mende language is related to the Mande language. So let's go here. Now, we read this earlier about the Monday, a little bit of it from a different article. I'm gonna scroll down. I ain't gonna get into that. I ain't gonna get into the Miley Sanghai, post Sanghai. Excuse me. I don't wanna deal with the secret societies. I will one day in the future get into this guy right here. The real Lion King, the Lion King of the the Mali Empire. Yep. 
we'll talk about the uh the epic of the lion king which influenced the movie they say we'll deal with that later ah uh, man so we ran out of room here so let's see let's do one different that's afrocentrist uh I, I ain't gonna call them afrocentrist there are, are african americans who make the argument that this language was here in the americas Once again, we're going to deal with the Gullah, going to deal with the black rice. We ain't getting too many searches up out of this. But the people that had to defend this. Ain't nobody in the chat? Nah, I don't want to use uh, Vasa because I got to log in. So y'all telling me that y'all can't find nothing either? Come on, man, like seven or eight of us, bro. All of us. We ain't there. We can't find nothing. All right, so let's do this. One, one, oh, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me go. Let me go back. Ding, 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 ding. The earliest people in the Americas were people of the Negro or African race who entered the Americas perhaps as early as 100,000 years ago. By the way, it had been straight and about 30,000 years ago in a worldwide maritime undertaking that included journeys from the wet and lake field Sahara towards the Indian Ocean and Pacific and from West Africa across the Atlantic toward the Americas. According to the Gladwin thesis, this ancient journey occurred particularly about 75,000 years ago and included black pygmies, black negroidic peoples, and black Australids similar to the aboriginal black people of Australia and parts of Asia and India. Gladwin thesis. Harold Gladwin. Oh, looky, looky. Looky here, looky here. There we go. The Gladwin guy, Mr. Thesis. The white man, mm-hmm, was an American archaeologist, anthropologist, and stockbroker born in New York, Pseudo City. Harold Sterling Gladwin was a early 20th century archaeologist that specialized in southwestern archaeology of the United States. He is also known for his famed excavations at Snake Town, Arizona, in which he accomplished several publications on this topic. His theories on migrations to the new world from Asia also gained attention. Hmm. Let's take a look a little bit deeper into our good old buddy, Mr. Gladwin. All right. So I don't care nothing about his earlier work. You might want to read all of that if you want to. I'm more interested in some other stuff. I want to see where he's coming up with things. So new method devised. From the Gila Pablo, the Gladwins conducted research on Southwestern prehistory for over 20 years after donating the facility to the Uni University of Arizona in 1951. In the years while they conducted their research, Harold Gladwin and his wife traveled throughout the Southwest conducting numerous excavations at sites of Snake Town near Phoenix, Casa Grande, Flagstaff, Chaco Canyon and various, my bad, 
uh, places throughout Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Texas. Through their numerous excavations, the two came up with a new method for designation of cultures, which included taking a look on the current linguistic stocks of the area and through a system of roots, stems, branches, phases, and terms, putting these stocks into a context of patterns of southwestern region. So, this don't give me what I need. But now I know who he is. Yep, now I know. I'm going to get back to him in just a minute. Let's finish up here. So ancient African terracotta portraits of 1000 BC to 500 BC. Recent discoveries in the field of linguistics and the methods have shown without a doubt that the Mende African ethnic stock, according to Clyde Winters and other rights, a writer, see Clyde Winters' website, the Mende script was discovered, uh, was discovered on Africa. Although the carbon-14 testing dates of the present presence of the Black Old Max of Kai people, oh, this was brought up today, XI people, this was brought up this morning by Holiday, is about 1500 BC. Journey to the Mexico conclusion is based on the finding of an African native cotton that was discovered in North America. It is a possible manner of arriving where uh, Western Sahara and what is today Mauritania, one of Africa's early civilizations, the Zing Empire existed and may have lived in what was a lake filled, wet and fertile Sahara where ships crisscrossed from place to place place all right anybody got any problems with what we said right here in this paragraph going once going twice anybody uh marcel mende are also in liberia Look at Marcel. Yep, I agree. He did make that up, brother. Um, so now we would have to chase down Clyde Winters and review his work, which we are already familiar with. Um, and basically, this is where the cookie begins to crumble. Right. Look at the website, raceandhistory.com. Now, watch this. I'm, a, I'm going to stop. Usually when you have information filled with so-called evidence like this, the way that this this uh article is reading, um, we should have at the bottom of this sources. So let me slow down because I didn't have to do much. Here we go. References. Look at the references, y'all. Washita Nation, www.hotep.org. Clyde A. Winters, the Nubians and the Olmecs. Blacks of India, boy, this is full of hyperdiffusionism. Blacks of the Pacific and Melanesia. If you ever visit the ancient afro monuments of Mexico with the Washita nation of Louisiana and the monuments of Nubia, Egypt, or West Africa, you need to take great pictures. Here's what it says on down. Descendants of pre-Columbian Blacks in the U.S., Caribbean, Central America, and South America in the fight for the return of their stolen occupied lands. The Washita. Susu Economics. Wonder where they got Susu Economics from. I don't even want to get into that. My head beginning to hurt. The problems that I have is the beginning of this particular article by this gentleman, where he states that perhaps as early as 100,000 years ago, with no source, he makes a claim in a first sentence with no source. Then he later goes by and says, according to Gladwin thesis, Where the hell is this thesis at?
Look at these websites. Look at this. Look at it. Look. Look at this. I'm looking for Gladwin's thesis, y'all. Look at this website, Lost Feather. <laughs> this is, this is horrible. Look, we go back to the site that we already own, Deliberately Hidden History, Lipstick Ally. Look at this, Columbus Arrives, Indigenous Americans. Uh, let's see if this is it. Claire one thesis. So we understand that they're using Wiener and Gladwin. Leaner and Gladwin. They're using the glad one thesis. Oh, look, can't get on that. I'm gonna have to do some other search in a different type of way to get glad one's thesis. What's this dude name? First name again. Look at him. I'm doing all this live, man. I could have did this less live, put together a presentation and ran it down. I didn't want to do none of that. So let me go live. Here you go right here. This is your man right here. But hold on though. We gotta be careful with Leo Wiener because I think it's like two of them. They don't look the same. He's a Russian Jew. This is, uh, when you're doing research, uh, this is one of the steps in research is knowing your author. And a lot of people don't do this. They don't know their author. I ain't making this up, I told you, look, when it was born in Belial Stock, Russian Empire, a Polish Jewish origin. His father was Zelman Wiener and his mother was Fredra Revenwitz. He studied at the University of Warsaw in 1880. Uh, this is him, blah, 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 blah. He left there, you don't believe me, this is Lena Wiener. Look at his major works. Look at his works. Gypsies as fortune tellers and blacks as blacksmiths. This is Leo Wiener. Africa and the discovery of America. This Leo, this they got right here. Just the man. All right. Let me get back to this. So Clyde Winters is supposed to have information on the Mende language. Now he, not even the people who claim who who telling their own story are saying anything about them being in the Americas. I hear hard on that language. These people don't even tell their own story. They don't, they don't mention nothing about no language being in the Americas or none of that. But now the language in the Americas. So this this uh, guy mentions it, but it doesn't provide a link or some type of segue to Clyde Winter's page. He says go to Clyde Winter's website. 
So this whole article isn't sourced correct, correctly at all. Let's look at what Chief Holiday said, the Kai people, because he brought that up to all. And he tried to get us some old mandate. See, so now we know, we know where they, look at this. Look. Look at this. I don't know information on them. Copy. Aboriginal Mexicans. The old Max. Black civilization. Look, real history. Back to that website right there. Lipstick. This is trash. I don't know what to say about people. Don't. Don't know what to say about people. I specifically was trying to find the mandate people in America's and then I, it sent me to the Gullah. It don't send me nowhere else. I should have been able to see the Gullah before anything else. Let me go back to the chat. Anybody got anything else, man? I'm about to get off this. I'm looking, I mean, anybody, you know, anybody got something they want to say? Look at this. Look, the ancient kingdoms of West Africa, which occupied the coastal forest belt from Cameroon to Ghana, had trade and relationship with other Africans dating back to prehistoric times. This this how pseudos act. Watch this. However, by 1500 BC, these ancient kingdoms not only traded along the Ivory Coast, but with the Phoenicians and other peoples, they expanded their trade to the Americas where the evidence for an ancient African presence is overwhelming. Where is all this overwhelming evidence? The kingdoms which came to be known, uh, known by Arabs and Europeans during the Middle Ages were already well established when much of the Western Europe was still inhabited by the Celtic tribes. By the fifth century BC, the Phoenicians were running commercial ships to several West African kingdoms. During the perfection later, Bronze was being used to make various tools and instruments as well as beautiful, uh, beautifully naturalistic works of art. All right, so let's do this. I can do books. I can get into books. I can go to the History of West Africa, Volume 1. Uh, it doesn't speak of any trade to North America. It does, however, have the Portuguese coming from the New World, making it to the New World and coming back from the New World, uh, back to that with uh, stuff. Um, hold on real quick. Low rider. Excuse the silence. 
I'm on it by myself, you know what I mean? A few people got the link, but they ain't budge. It's all good. Send to their emails. They never show up anyway. It don't even matter. All right. I'm just looking at some older presentations that I've done because I'm looking for something specifically. These are all Google Slide presentations, some PowerPoints, but not all. So when I was looking for certain, if we have again, black, oh, uh, you're going. I need to get into this one. I need to get into this one right here. I need to redo this one. I also need to bring back um, another presentation. What I'm looking for in here. Hmm. Okay. So what I was looking for, and it may be on Facebook. Maybe on Facebook, there is a um, a document regarding trade, and it was showing the items that made it to the New World and the items that came back from the New World, and um, that that document was really important. Because the Portuguese, though those earlier uh, people that were coming to the New World, they were responsible for bringing back these goods and services. Now I'm no hyperdiffusionist, and and I do not subscribe to this assumption or narrative that. Black people were showing white people how to, and I'm speaking in color terms, how to get to the Americas. I will say that there were Africans on some of those ships, but we don't know directly to what capacity of the intelligence level of those people. So therefore I won't, I won't say uh, all that stuff that other people would say. I just can't do that. I'm not at liberty to, to say that. This was a pretty good long presentation, but that's on the monster, so I ain't got to deal with that. Um, let me get off this. All right, so I ain't gonna hold nobody else up, man. I just wanted to kind of run down on uh, some of the stuff that was actually going on and being said lately. And uh, I really don't see this Monday script appearing in the Americas. Uh, Clyde Winters is doing something that Google can't even research and find and pull up for you to verify Clyde Winters. 
So this is strictly an independent claim that's backed by no linguistic evidence. This is another reason why the argument that uh, the Amara squad had or conversation that they had with Clyde Winters went south because he refused to acknowledge his errors and stick to truth. Instead, we got conspiracy theorists, websites, and hyper diffusionist links that are making people something that they are not. I could have kept reading the uh, raceandhistory.com article, but we wouldn't get anywhere in that particular article. And here's another reason why. It says pre-Christian Ghana and their counterparts in Nubia, Egypt, and Mesoamerica. They're linking all of these things. They're talking about ancient trades between the Americas and Africa. So the Rimage, we know, didn't write about trading with nobody in America. If they did, we should be able to find it. So hold on. Dang it, man. I ain't want to do this again. I shouldn't have said that. I should have said new world. So let's take a look. Don't, don't, don't. Ancient Egyptian trade consisted of gradual creations. My bad. Of land and sea trade routes connecting the ancient Egyptian civilization with the Fertile Crescent, Arabia, Sub-Saharan, Africa, and India. America's not on that list. Nowhere in America's on that list. So this article is wrong and all the sources that are down at the bottom are wrong as well. So there was no trade here. The Nubians didn't trade. I mean, uh, you know, they didn't trade either. And nobody over there, how, how, did, how could they trade? What did they use to get there? Those boats were for seas rivers it went for ocean it went for ocean they didn't have the technology at the time to do what needed to be done to make it across no atlantic they didn't even care they, they had no need for going outside of where they were uh-oh the pseudo site that the ancient Egyptians trade nicotine and cocaine. We all know about that article. Um, there's a, a nice source on the article. There was no evidence of tamperment. I mean, of uh, the the mummies actually having being tested for cocaine or anything like that. Uh, that was clearly a one off and could have been heavily influenced by the lady who it was. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. However, I'm going to leave it at that. Oh, 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 stop. This is boring. All righty, y'all, we got this PDF pulled up. This posted by Taylor Gordon. And we don't know who he is, but let's see. Let's see if we can find out who Taylor is. We'll come back to his article. Now, because Taylor wrote something, we actually can deal with Taylor. He wrote something. He published something. It's a website up. It's in a PDF format. Um, 
Let's see what his 10 things are. 10 pieces of evidence to prove that black people sailed to the Americas long before Columbus by Taylor Gordon. Here's Columbus itself. Uh, American narcotics discovered in Egyptian mummies. That's been debunked. Um, Egyptian artifacts in North America. That's been debunked. Um, ancient pyramids. Okay, let's see what he said about the pyramids. Um, constructed pyramids was a highly specialized and complicated task. It took the ancient Egyptians a lot of time to master. In ancient Egypt, there are signs progression from the original step pyramid of Zosa to the more sophisticated pyramids that now stand in Giza. According to historians, hey, Fat Daddy, according to historians, it would be impossible for any group of people to have built those complex pyramids without going through the same progressions. Professor Everett Borders note the presence of com uh, completed pyramids in La Venta in Mexico, but the unusual absence of any earlier forms of pyramids. According to the Borders, it's a sign that Africans have already mastered the construction of pyramids in Egypt, sailed over, listen y'all, sailed over to the New World and constructed these dual purpose tombs and temples in the Americas. I'm gonna move on. Ancient African skeletons discovered in the New World. There have been many instances of archaeologists discovering skulls and skeletons that have been clearly belonged to the people of African descent. Polish professor, uh, oh man, the native, the native people don't like you, dog, because you said these people is African. Revealed that the discovery of the African skulls at the Olmec sites in Tatalucco, Sarod de las Mesas, and Monte Alban. Uh, even more ancient African skulls that would clearly predate Columbus' arrival in the Americas were discovered through Central and South America, with some even being unearthed in what is now California. So we know that the California is dealing with the uh, Mastodon bones. We know where we stand on the Mastodon bones, so we don't want to deal with that. But if anybody want to get look up the ancient African skeletons discovered in the New World and try to validate this dude, by all means, you can feel free to do that because you probably need to go ahead and debunk that as well. But he said African, so the abos don't want to do it. Oh, a clear link in religion. This is hyper diffusionism at its best. I'm going to skip that. Um, the account of other European explorers. Hmm. Vascas Nunes del Babo also made record of seeing Negroes. Well, we all know about the scan map. And we can get into the scan map. You know, when you're below the equator, you will have a different skin tone. Genetically speaking, he had no evidence. It was based on pure look of ship. I ain't even got to elaborate on that one. Like I said, we can peel this all the way apart. Africans were master shipbuilders. Right. I have a uh, I have an article. Well, no, I have a presentation that I did on the technology in ancient Kemet, they deal, uh, we're not dealing with ancient Kemet, just the, the, the technology of shipbuilding in general is a 15th century uh, technological improvement. And this, uh, and in this instance, you know, it kind of led us to where we are. So uh, kind of deals with that all together. Uh, let me see here. He's look what he says here. He says shipbuilding is selling now over Hold on. Elijah, where you at? What I tell you to do. All right, my bad. Okay, so. He says here in this particular article display that shipbuilding and sailing are over 20,000 years old in the Sahara and cave wall paintings of ancient ships were displayed in a National Geographic magazine years ago. All right. So let's do this because he said National Geographic. 20,000 year old ships.
five centuries ago, a shipload of gold raked off a beach for diamonds. Arctic ships. 170-year-old shipwreck. 2400. Archaeologists say the 2400-year-old ship is so well preserved. That can't be it. How U.S. Clipper changes. Romans. All right. 20,000 year old ship. Uh, Compromise member of uh, L was on a spaceship. Okay, spaceship. What is it? Custom Scott ship. Let me do this. Survival of the Fist, the Book of Revelations. The accounts of other European explorers, Chris Columbus was the only European explorer who made note of an African presence in the Americas. It goes to write about the, uh, this dude that we just mentioned. This whole line that, hold on. This whole line that we just mentioned. Oh man, I just seen Noble Jew Ali name pop up. Oh man, did I really just see that? Oh man. This book is by Chief Zulu. I know I'm boring some of y'all, man. I apologize. I, I really am. Yeah, but I know this will be on record, and that's a good thing. However, it's it's uh Coffee talking about where the link at. The link was sent to your email, so I don't know why you're asking where the link at. You should have been able to log in. You got in other way this morning. It's the same link. Same link. It was sent to your email. 357 at Gmail. Chief Zulu. This book was written in 2018, by the way, y'all. Look at the black fist on there. Let's see if we can find out what the author looked like. The man got the Perret M. Hey, ruin his joker. Nope. We can't find out what he looked like. I'm insulted again. 
Now, New World becomes officially debunked as Dr. Julian White, uh, White Wright, a maritime archaeologist at the University of South End, explained the voyage from Africa on ancient ships was quite a plausible undertaking based on the capabilities of the vessel in the period of historical took place. All right, so if you put that in there, why would you put the other part in there? And um, shipbuilding is not 20,000 years old. Shipbuilding technology, we, we can't even assume. Oh, okay, they're dealing with the old Mac kids. We'll let Nahisa deal with that. And what's his last one? A long trade history by sea. We don't have evidence for a trade history by sea. No long evidence. Right here he puts um, a link, 10 pieces of evidence to prove black people sailed to the Americas long before Columbus. Can I copy that? Can I click on it? Let's see where he got it from. According to Paul Alfred Barton, I think CK mentioned Barton earlier today. She mentioned Wiener, I think Barton, and somebody else. All of these Europeans are pushing the conspiracy. Look at his article. Look where it show up. Atlantic Black Star. Black people use this, y'all. Black people go to the Atlantic Black Star because they can get all this history right here. See? So this blogger right here, Neo Griot, him, I guess, would be responsible for uh, posting it to here. The chat really, I mean, uh, the stream is behind on my computer, but I was trying to catch up. Yeah, that's what I thought I was trying to catch up. All right, so I want to apologize for wasting everybody time today. I do appreciate the one thumbs down. I always know who that person is or people. It's usually, it should be two thumbs down, but, you know. Um, give me a second. Let me see if any of these uh, fools want to waste their time on talking about this. Um, when I say fools, I'm talking about Kofi Pasai. He's a fool. There you go. Okay, I just dropped the link in the chat. Kofi, if you're in the chat, click the link. Sutek, if you're in the chat, click the link. Boss, if you're in the chat, click the link. If you don't want to come in the chat, then I'm going to say peace. All right, hold on, y'all. Somebody trying to come in.
Oh man, this is horrible. Okay, so if y'all want to deal with this dude, man, I'm gonna do it like this. This is why some people get mad and call people Afrocentrists, scholars, and all this craziness. Oh, okay, now somebody then came in. They came straight in too, y'all. You see, you see how they went? I'm talking about straight in. Where the link at? Where the link at? And they came straight in, y'all. I ain't had an email. Yeah, whatever. I said, uh, look, I had, I said, well, then how you get on this one? Um, click the link uh, that you had in the uh, chat. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. I ain't that something. I ain't that about to be. <laughs> you got something you want to say, brother? No, I mean it's just I I mean it's just, it's just crazy, man. I I don't you know I, I, the more we try to combat some of the crazy outlandish things that some of them people said, and I mean. I thought I killed some of that information when I did a whole series on uh, the Gullah Geechee people. I mean, I touched on the Mendy people a lot, touched on the Kissy people uh, a lot. I touched on some of the people from the Congo. I touched on uh, a lot of those languages they call Pinjin language or the, uh, um, the Mendy language. I mean, so many different aspects, man. I, I just don't understand why these people are still trying to force uh, some of these African ethnic groups as Native Americans? I, I just, I, I just don't see. It. Just don't That's see. It. Yeah. It's crazy. Let me see who else. Anybody else try to jump on? I know. Some I said, all boss had. Boss said he had something to say, man. Get on your boss. That's it, COVID. That's all you get, brother. That's all I got, man. Okay, so man, I want to delete that person, but I ain't even gonna do it. Hold on. Now nah, let me do this. Real black at this on fire. I want to play something for the listening audience that who may not have been up at three, four, five in the morning. You know, because people do sleep. You know what I'm saying? So let's see. Hold on. Let me get to. Pluto is the. And that state, that whole paragraph is in reference to all this shit that is below this, including the theory that these two brothers are. Hey, well, this is okay. I, 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 I gotta say this though, right? Like, you happy as hell, huh? All right. No, I'm not happy as nothing. Because I'm tired of playing games with y'all. Like, it's just too much. Like, we don't act like grown men. We act like kids around here. We act no, like. So they have to have some type of knowledge if they're okay now the 10 tribes as far as that is concerned have you ever heard of um um manasseh ben israel have you ever heard of him before no i never heard of him all right before joseph smith wrote his um his scrolls and claimed he got inspired the guy manasseh ben israel in 1655 is the one that started that the indian tribe The Assyrian said, hey, you know what? Just to let you know, man, I took your peoples down to Halar and Halar. Yeah, the prophet's going to sure <laughs> Use the DNA article, bro, to de debunk all y'all shit. That's all I want to talk about. And if you don't want to talk about that, bro, talk to Garfield or somebody. I'm not doing it. I can talk about whatever you want to talk about, brother. I can. I can talk about whatever you want to talk about. Good. So let's Ooh, talk for real? Let's talk. Hold up, then. Hold up, everybody. Hold up. Hold up, then. Okay, hold on for a minute. <laughs> hey, Chief. Hey, Chief. Hold on. Everybody be quiet, Chief. You're in the middle of the street right now. Yeah. I don't want to holler at you. All I'm saying is, please explain to me why Con Calloway used a 
DNA article that debunks everything y'all have. Right. See, he went in silence. Back you, Garfield. What's up, bro? You in there? Yeah. Um, I, never, I have some never. more questions. No, we don't. Okay, never. you can ask him some more questions. Yeah, I'm gonna hang up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang up, man. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. You finished with your man? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> you had a good. I, I had go a back and listen. Five minutes. Yeah, I go back and listen, man. All right. Yeah, nice try, Garfield. Peace, peace and blessings, man. Stay up here. Uh, by the way, remember, you ain't tell me the prophecy of the desolate countries around the desolate Egypt. So not only Egypt was desolate, all the countries around Egypt was desolate. And if you believe that, you need to check, get yourself into some sort of mental health. All right? All right. All right, that's cool, brother. You, bro, you have a blessing. Marshall was right, though, because you're just going to right, that process right. that you can't even answer his question. Sister, you don't know what you're talking about. Don't even forget. I know that that book that you believe in was oh, written yeah. by a gang of racist and sexist people. I know that much. <laughs> Also got his hand up. That's absolutely fine. He can raise his hand all he wants to. You heard him say what he said. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, do I need to do I need to go back and do I need to go back for anybody in the listening audience? I'm so ready to show James my Because you heard you heard holiday bring up Monday. That will be a huge website. A scientific article dealing with evolution. And that lives and he broke his whole goddamn operation. Explain that to me. Before we can talk with any other goddamn nigga, he would say, you know what? That nigga is dead. Looking at it on the website as a man, he's wrong for that. If you did that, you know what I'm saying? Or explain to me why the hell he did that. They go for both of y'all. I don't know yet. I don't know if she's going to be I don't know if she's going to be in. I don't know if she's going to be in. Your mic open, Carla. We all don't think the same. Oh, my bad. Okay, see. Is the nigga wrong? We still haven't had a real bad. Is the nigga wrong? Hold on. I know we're not wrong. I'm asking you. Y'all, so thank you. Y'all don't think the same. Okay, next point. Do you agree 
that that shit is on his website. I, I, I haven't seen the website. I haven't yeah, yeah, seen the website. I, 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 I haven't I'm seen not hooking his butt balls like y'all. All right, here we go. Yeah, this is exactly. what we're doing right now. Because I'm Come saying, on. if we're going to be honest, when I figure out that you're buying them niggas on some halfway shit, I fucking say it. I fucking say it. I said they on some pseudo ass shit and they halfway crook and that's some bullshit. All right? All that stick together shit is a bunch of bullshit. Y'all letting this man confuse African American people, you know what I'm saying, with some bullshit. Explain then, and then you then you can then you can tell. Let me explain to your audience and Dr. McCarthy and everybody else. <laughs> so, so that way Like we didn't know. First off, we're not Native Americans. We're not saying we're Native Americans, right? We're not saying that. Now, Aborigine, whatever the hell you want to say. Hold on, bro. So the same the same logic that you guys are putting to Macadon here, peace, shalom to Macadon. Um, y'all should have the same conversations about Africa and Mende and Angola. Free, see, see what you just did? Hold on, see what you just hold did? On. You see what y'all just did? Addressing what he originally hold on, hold on, CK. You see what y'all just did? Y'all just ease into some other shit. Yep. Say that, wait a minute, this didn't exist in, in 13th century. Well, Africa didn't exist in 13th century. Bro, this, but hey, brother. Bro. Kofi, do you have anything to say about Africa didn't exist in the 13th century? You don't want to deal with that? What about you, Brother Vasa? Do you want to deal with anything that you just heard? Please feel free. I kind of like it when my brain don't hurt, Sean. <laughs> um, I, I was going to come in, like I said, I was going to share those two slides. One of them, you know, it's uh, it gives you a, a written comparison of Mendeg, Gullah, and the English. But... Uh, the second slide goes into with them saying they from Texas and Mexico, and I make a connection with that as well on those two slides. And then for the rest of the time, I was just going to watch the chat and uh, report questions for the most part. Those was my original attentions. I'm kind of busy, y'all. Okay, Kofi, you, you, you ain't got nothing to say about that 13th century. Man. 13th century Africa. Africa didn't exist until the 13th century. Uh, are they saying that linguistically there wasn't a term Man, for it? Or? I don't even know what they're saying. You heard him right. say Africa didn't exist until the 13th century. I don't I, know, man. I can't. Uh, do y'all feel like we raising their popularity by giving them attention? Sean, I yeah, we say, uh uh, you know, you shut down me sharing uh, particular links and, and documents at times. I get it. But do y'all feel like we feeding into them way too much? And the more we do it, the more they just going to reboot off of it and use it? Well, they die. Well, people like Holiday ain't going nowhere because he's going to keep on talking crazy trying to get on links. He, he, he'll stalk a page and see who will put a link in the chat just so he can hop on. That's his MO. But as far as the origin of the word or the etymology of the word, it ain't no 13th century. So, so that whole 13th century thing is way out there and it's crazy. When you have people saying 17th century, I mean the 7th century, you got people saying other type of things. You talk. You got people talking about the Afri. You got people doing all of these things. Has the work been done on it to actually to to vitalize it? I can't answer that. There's still people doing linguistic work on 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 the origins of it, and then when they come out with that, I let them deal with that. I'm not into all of that. What I am into is knowing that it wasn't no dang on 13th century. So I'm I'm gonna play a little bit more. Brother, 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 we got enough sense around this motherfucker to know when people start calling. We know where Roman Africa is, bro. Roman Africa does not apply to the whole continent. Come on, man. That's not the conversation. Why is y'all do not agree with DNA? Right or wrong, Chief? No, I don't agree with DNA. All okay, now freeze. Hold on. Hey, Black Lotus. Black Lotus. Hold on, Black Lotus. You do not agree with DNA. Am I correct? Oh, yeah, I don't agree with it. Evolution and all that's some dumb shit. Am 
I correct? It's educated dumb shit. Okay, so yes, listen. Educated. Yo, hold on. Come on, come on, CK. Woo. In the chat room, right? In the chat room, right? In the chat room. I want y'all to grab, grab Con Calloway fucking website, yo. It's right there. Y'all see it? He put it in the back chat on Zoom. In the back chat. Do y'all see that? Left side. Look, Scroll down to Hold on. You got to go past. Outfit. You got to go past Barack Obama, Donald Trump, a bunch of cowboys and idiots stand outside on a horse, and then you get to that picture. You see that? You see? Yeah. Hold on. Hey, Lotus, what I'm saying is the only argument that we have. Look at this name. Right here, bro. So, so if y'all don't have a supporting document on based off what, you know, my elder Professor Small said, then this is the argument that he was talking about. I know he was talking about this argument. He just was ready. He's seen the homo. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all see the word human. If you see a word human in a scientific article, it doesn't necessarily. One of its tusks, for example, was embedded vertically in the dirt. Wait. I just wanted to show y'all the name. Look at the name of this person, man. Chief Killer Lion Lotus. The site was found in 92 and excavated in 93. Why is it only being announced now? The All right, so uh, Holiday brought up an argument about uh, the Mastodon bones, saying that people were seeing the Americas as early as 130,000 years. So he wanted to deal with the Mastodon bones, but he didn't know about the article because he don't read scientific literature. However, I'm not about to play no more of this video. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this day. Uh, Voss and Kofi, if y'all got something smart to say, man, please say something smart for the people in the audience. Um, I don't know if you still wanted to keep it in the realm of the Manday language. You can deal with whatever you want to deal with, brother. But I'm quite, I'm to, to add into these conversations, I got full-blooded Native American family members. And I got some that's um, ethnically mixed, for lack of better terms. <clears throat> the people in my family that have CDIBs, they do receive certain benefits. It's, it's not an all-out handout, but you get certain little things. They brought up a case of uh, a murder charge and where they tried to get uh, the, the jurisdiction of the tribe to proceed I forgot where that took place. I think it was here in Oklahoma, honestly. I just wasn't really paying attention. I kind of jumped in and jumped out of that conversation. Typically what they do for members and citizens, and it's really where you'll see a lot of the citizens try to use this at times, that applies in family court. And what they try to do is keep you in the land jurisdiction because they need increased participation in their government, they need their votes. They need their population to grow because that's how they keep resources. They wouldn't add that in. So them trying to use that and then taking a picture of a brother who may have been a freedman is very misleading to the people. Second thing, I've had to get my children's CDIBs cards. If you don't come in prepared already to show your doll's roll number, how you associated with a particular tribe, bring in the birth certificate of the member who signed uh, the original dolls, the first thing they ask is for DNA to prove it, to get your application even processed. The third thing, they keep saying Native Americans don't use DNA. I've been mentioning the Kenwood man. Through the Kenwood man, they did DNA testing. This allowed Native Americans to fight in the Supreme Court to where anytime these remains are found, as archaeologists do they research, this landlocks those remains to go to whatever tribe in that region's sacred burial grounds. They use DNA to do that. But what's also interesting about the Kenwood man and its development 
it led to more research of how um, the migration patterns through the Bering Strait may have took place. And what they showed was you had particular groups that went down the coastline. Um, they may have went by rafts, small boats, canoes, et cetera, and landed in the South Americas, which leads to the young lady that they found in the cave. I can't remember her name exactly. Um, Sean, you may know uh, which one I'm talking about. And then they show how Kenwood men would have been a original branch, but due to the fact that they went by land and slowly populated the Americas, how you see a change over time in their DNA structures and uh, particular groups. So for them to even say they don't use DNA just goes way beyond me. Um, I'll just uh, chime out at that because I don't want this... Uh, useful information on the men day to get very off track. Okay, so um, you saying the D folk is crazy because they they using um, they want to use science when it favors their argument when they want to deal with uh, Naya and Luzia but then they don't want to use the other aspects of science when it deals with dealing with genetics, uh, which also came out on Garfield's show because they want to use gene, uh, genealogy, but they only want to use certain parts of genealogy. Like DNA doesn't have anything to do with genealogy. And I think that's where they make, they make a huge mistake in their argument is that they just coming, you know, they're just making up stuff as they go. Um, so tell if you got anything, bro, because Kofi quiet, you know what I'm saying? He got he got in trouble. <coughs> nah, yeah, it's kind of hard for me man. to talk right now. But well, go ahead, so tell it's kind of hard for me to talk, right? That's why I ain't saying too much. Nah, I just said I just I just got in, man. I uh I just got in the house, so I don't wanna I need to know what what y'all talking about first. We're talking about pseudos. Well, I tell you right now, uh, Chief Holiday said that Africa didn't exist until the 13th century and that the uh, Mende are the people of the Americas. And I think another brother said that uh, Angola is in Indiana. Are these the Aboriginal people saying this? Yeah. Oh, okay, that makes sense. What? Go home. What is in, in North, what you say? Hold on, man. Oh. is in Indiana. My thing is, like, why do they always so, – so <clears throat> they want to use African um, uh, geography, I say, and they want to put it in America. Because I've heard some of them say Egypt is over here and um, the, the Nile is really over here, and I'm just like – Okay, so y'all want to use these landmarks. Y'all want to use the, the terms. Y'all just want to put it over here in America. When the native, the, the actual native people wouldn't even say that. Like, it's, it, they, act like they act like it's not, no, no more natives left. Like, they're extinct. Like, it's no <laughs> more left. Like, we can't go talk to these people. Vasa, you down there, you probably the most closest one to the people that you could actually go talk to. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... Man, man I live maybe three minutes away from the Chickasaw's tribal headquarters. Right. Now, so, so now, we got let, 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 me, let me let me throw y'all this, right? I tried to walk this through on that um, dream of an all-black state. My family came here as Seminoles. Some of them got enslaved to the Chickasaw's, got freed and gained their membership to the Choctaw. And if you don't really take the time to track that down, look how easily you can be misled to thinking, oh, my great grandma or my great grandfather was a Choctaw, if you don't ask questions and you don't do research. That easily, we would have never known. So it, it can be misleading. And like I said earlier, I got full blooded uh, Native American relatives, some through marriage, well, mainly through marriage. Uh, of elders marrying in to each other. 
it puts me in a dynamic to say, you know, you disrespecting parts of my family on both sides. You disrespecting the African part of me, but then you disrespect, because I don't identify as a Native American. I identify as Black, African American, however y'all want to term it. But you disrespecting them. So it's like, I don't really think they understand that they, they shooting themselves in the foot by doing this. Now, what I think would be clever for them to do since they have all this research and they do all this lineage. If you want to help the freedmen people who are trying to fight their cases still to this day to prove that they uh, were supposed to receive benefits, use your methodology to teach that. This is how you can get you know, your rewarded uh, citizenship because they're not going to make you a member. But if y'all pay attention to whatever the sister's name that was on the uh, show last night, she said, no, we don't want to go to the tribes because we don't want to be citizens. We don't mess with tribes. So if you really, really take the time and just listen to what they say most of the time, almost every statement, not article, almost every statement they make contradicts themselves if people actually know how the conversation should take place. So, and uh, best believe I got some stuff on, up my sleeve. I'm trying to get in touch with a couple of key figures that break down the language and the culture. Y'all give me some time. I'm working on those interviews as we speak. It's just a lot of politi political stuff that you have to go around. Um, Cause we can't, you know, have somebody misrepresenting their uh, respected tribes and, and governments, but I'm working on it. Yeah, yeah. So that's so that's an example right there where you know we got boots on the ground. We got people that can actually talk to the original native people that we know of to be Native Americans. You know, not the not the nick. I'm gonna say not the niggas is acting like it. You know what I'm saying? They, they, it's they like Uncle say it's buffoonery, man. So you know, my take on it is, Vasa, you doing good work. Um, I'm definitely uh want to see what comes of your interview so we can bust a hole in this because the, the thing is like it ain't a lot of black people that got access to the native the original Native Americans to have that dialogue with them because I'm pretty sure if you ask the people over uh, this, this here they're not gonna say uh no Angola over here they're not gonna say Angola over here they're not gonna say the Nile over here they're not gonna say that so these people that's acting like Aboriginals. Or Native Americans, they acting like the Native Americans is extinct and we can't go talk to these people. So yeah, that's my piece on it. The college I was going to, once I pay my tuition, I'm back in there. But they have a whole department for Native American studies. And to sit back and do this, I guarantee if any of them tried to come on that campus or amongst these people it, it's gonna it's not gonna be a pretty sight they gonna chew them up at every single angle on this and just for curiosity's sake last night when they said oh more people are researching being indigenous or aboriginal if you go and do the analytics on google i took the time to do that y'all in almost every state it was 90% more people were interested in Africa than the terms indigenous or Aboriginal. One of them brought up Texas. Texas was 93% more interested in Africa. 7% of Texas population was interested in indigenous or Aboriginal. I'm gonna chime back out on that one. Well, I don't think that they understand how to properly research. Um, it's evident in the arguments when they're trying to make them every day. I also don't think that um, it's, a, it's worth our time really to elaborate on uh, in discussions with these people who have no work, written work. So we have to track down their sources and deal with the sources. So um we know now that Clyde Winters is the center stage for this Mende language showing up in the Americas. So we would have to comb through tooth and nail Clyde Winters work in order to 
see where he get this claim from. Then we know that Leo Winner and the uh, the other white dude I showed earlier had something to do with uh, had something to do with these other claims that were thrown out. Uh, then the Burden dude who has the uh, Atlanta Black Star article talking about the 10 things or 10 reasons you see something in the Americas and so forth, um, kind of go from there. However, um, I really don't even want to waste my time with those guys, like the Holidays, the Callaways, um, the other Broken Feathers. You know, we just have to really deal with the source and we keep giving them an opportunity to overshadow learning experiences. We're going to stay further behind. So I just want to end, man, because I really ain't, I ain't got nothing else to say. So anybody else want to build and talk about whatever they want to talk about, man, the floor is yours. I'm actually done. Only thing I can say is uh, tune in. Uh, very, very soon to watch me build on the seminar room, people, and I'm going to do my best to try to dissect a lot of this. Uh, at the moment, that's all I got to say. I'm going to try to give y'all as many first contacts as possible in between Africans and Native Americans and work my way up. Because it's a beautiful story we can tell. It's a very, very beautiful story we can tell. We can, we can boast that it was an African that introduced uh, the, the British to the Pacific Ocean for the first time. We introduced Francis Drake to the Pacific Ocean for the very first time. That led to him circum circumnavigating the planet. But it also led to them traveling northward and discovering what we now call the United States. We got beautiful stories that, to tell that are factual. We don't have to make anything up for feel good moments. We got true stories that can really, really benefit if told properly to further encourage um, education properly. And, you know, to make us have a sense of uh, racial pride, if you want to call it that. We don't have to make up anything at all. Let me, ask, let me ask a question that this just came to my head. <clears throat> so, you know, like a lot of people claim to be Aboriginal now, right? But I'm pretty sure their parents and their grandparents wasn't identifying as that. Because we can look back during uh, the Black Panthers and the Civil Rights Movement and all that. Like, where was where was these people's parents at? Where was these people's grandparents at that's claiming to be average? Like, what's the dude's name that said don't plug it? Or let's talk about uh, cut the internet off? Callaway. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure his parents was down with the Black Liberation Movement. I'm pretty sure of it. I don't know for a fact, but that's just my feeling. Like, where was the um, Native American rise? Like, where was their little civil civil... Uh, where was they little movement at? Was, we got an Abo movement right now. Yeah, the Abo. Where, where was the first started. generation? Where was the second generation Abo movement? I, I, I got you, Satap. I got you, Satap. This I'm, is Doc. Now, don't get the question twisted. I'm talking about these people that claim to be Abos. I'm talking about their. I, I got you. Yeah, I got. I got yeah, you. The, Watch. the whole Aboriginal movement started in nineteen in the in the eighties with a more dude. And it, okay. It, and then it, it did not progress because it was struggling against the black power thing. So everybody was, was you know, Africa, 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 up until this, these people were saying, well, we need a new identity as Africans in America. So they started using the term Negro, Negro, Negro. And then from, from out of that, you know, through, through the 60s and 70s, then you have this Morris dude claiming to be uh, Aboriginal and but it didn't pick up no weight until the last three years. That's what I'm saying. So where was these people's parents at during that? Man, you know where they was at, bro. They I got a, us. I got a theory right, right. of where all this stems from, Satep. Okay, and and I've said this numerous times. L.J. Abbott 
wrote an article in the Independence uh, magazine, 1907, and it's titled The Race Question in the 46th State. I'm going to read from it. It says, you can offend no black. Wait, I'm, I'm reading it wrong. You can offend a black no easier than by denying his Indian parentage. This is so throughout Oklahoma. Every Negro that can possibly maintain his contention insists that he is an Indian. In this, he feels that he can avoid some of the anthropy that meets his race at every turn. It must be confessed that the Negro Indian does occupy more influential positions in Oklahoma society than a mulatto or than a pure blood African. This can partially be explained from the fact that the Negro Indians have large landed interests and that they are decided factor. Hold on, let me make sure I'm reading this right. And that they are a decided factor in the politics of the new state. But the stain of the Negro blood in their veins puts a social barrier upon the tribe. And I can keep reading and keep reading and keep reading. All of this stems from possibly having grandparents who were fighting for those freedmen rights. So if certain ones say, my grandma said we was this tribe or this tribe or this tribe, they may have very well been associated with those tribes. Now, whether it was through membership or citizenship, citizenship would have came from being in bondage to them. Membership would have only been if a sister gave birth to you. It could have been an Indian father. No, no, no. It could have been a black father. It had to be an Indian woman because they were matrilineal. Everything yeah, went through yeah. the mother. Yeah, that was the only way you could be a member. That that was the only way at that yeah, you're right. So say it again, it, say it again. It could have been a black it could have been a black father, right? And he lays with a native woman from whatever tribe. Most of them were matrilineal. If he laid with a native woman and produced a child, that child would get all rights as a member. The yep. father could only be a citizen. Yep. They wouldn't accept him in, not as a member, but as a citizen. The child, now, and on, not, the, on the other end, would be the same way, right, too, Vasco? If if my sister married a Native American man and they gave birth, that my that child, my sister child, wouldn't be a member. That's my sister child would be a citizen, as well as her being a citizen and not a member of that tribe. Correct? Right. We got family mm -hmm. members who go through this right now as we speak. Some of us got tribal membership or citizenship. Some of us don't, and we s share the same lineage. But it's based off of that concept right there in itself, added with however it played with us being in bondage and coming out, getting on the dolls rolls. There's a whole story behind that where a lot of us got robbed behind it. I understand it. If people want to, maybe I can put together a presentation and show all the ways that they use tricks against us, how long they fought for. Can't even say how long they fought for those rights because they still fighting for those rights. So I understand where a lot of this conversation originated from. What I don't understand is superimposing yourself above the natives of this country as if that's going to help your argument. Because now you're insulting them. So let me go back to mute so I don't get too long-winded and y'all get to beat me up on that. Yeah, and, that, and that's my thing is, um, you know, you insulting the Native people of the land. You saying you were rich. Like, I don't know. I just go back to the, the question I asked, and I appreciate y'all for y'all's best answer. But I would, like to, um, I would like for these people to verify that their, uh, their parents feel the same way that they do. Cause I'm pretty sure a lot of them don't. Pretty sure a lot of them don't. A lot of people hide behind these avatars. A lot of people spew rhetoric, you know, and they family members is like, you know, you can go to your grandma. She's like, boy, we from Africa. We, what you, what you talking about? And you know, you try to tell them this. Oh, no, nah, my grandma, no, nah, we from here. We really from here. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what's happening, man, because I just don't see all these people's parents is, um, saying this or identifying as that. And um, I agree with what Vasa said, you know, some people is doing it just for 
persecution reason. They don't want to identify as Native American or as African American because of what may be said about them, what may happen to them, whatever, whatever. And if that's the case, you know, put it on the table. But don't don't try to act like we all from over here. That just kills me. And then you try to take, you try to usurp African ge geology and put it in America. Like, no, that's not cool. And the natives what? don't think it is either. Sean, what, um, okay, the chief holiday guy, um, I see his name popping up a whole lot. I know when I looked at, I know, I, I think he even been on Garfield a few times and then you just showed where uh, he was on, uh, having a discussion with uh, Unc on his channel last night uh, and his brother Lo I didn't know that Lotus was uh, identifying himself as an Aboriginal. I guess he's identifying himself as an Aboriginal. And we talk about uh, the Callaway cat. Um, what are they identifying? What tribe are they identifying themselves? Um, identifying themselves as, you know? From what I overheard, Cherokee, and uh, people don't really want me to get into how bad the relationship between Blacks and Cherokees was. I, mean, I don't even want to start even, that conversation. But, but from what I heard, I heard, I heard Cherokee, the sister said she didn't want to associate with a tribe because of being classified as a citizen versus member. So some of them won't even say that, but the most common one I hear is... Cherokee, yeah. But I mean, then they, but then they turn around and speak in Choctaw. Yeah, right. But I'm and 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 that's I'm I'm asking because I mean, all this discussion like I don't we I don't talked about this a whole year and a half ago, and and what I'm saying is, each one of these people that that, that claims Aboriginal, or even before we even heard the word Aboa. These people talking about Aboriginals. We we have people in our family that I always talked about, you know, and and I and I, I still see people today do that. Well, you know, I got Indian in my blood. Uh, her hair long and silky, or his hair. Oh, they must got Indian in their blood. And then even when we talk no. about the the Native Americans, uh, uh, or these Abos, they always distinguish themselves if they talk about a tribe that they belong to. It's always the five civilized tribes. It's never about, never none of these other tribes, which I, I gave a list, a list of other tribes, um, uh, um, Native American tribes, and, but you don't never hear about them tribes. You always hear about the Chickasaw, the Choctaw, uh, the Seminole, uh, the Creek, and it's another one that I'm, I'm, I'm Cherokee. missing there, Cherokee. Cherokee. Five, those are the five civilized tribes. When you go look at those five civilized tribes' history, those people enslaved Africans. Those same five tribes wanted to be just like the European. They adopted the ideology of the European. They even took some of their traditions and stopped practicing some of their traditions or synchronized some of the Europeans' uh, traditions, Christianity, and et cetera, some of their uh, uh, um, their moral compasses. I mean, they just did everything the European. That's why the European named them the Five Civilized Tribe because they adopted the European ideology and they began to enslave Africans as just like the Europeans did. And the Cretes was one of the worst ones out of all of out of all of them. That's how you look at when when you we, we talking about where Vasa and in Oklahoma. That's how they ended up in Oklahoma when it was pushed them in Oklahoma. And then when the creek was over there, the creeks was the worst ones over there. You know what I'm saying? Um, in Oklahoma, I think at one particular time they was fighting against those other five civilized tribes. They were the one that was controlling and wanted to keep the the uh, keep certain ones in slavery and was upset when they was trying to uh, uh, stop uh, them from enslaving other African people, the creek was fighting against that. You you see what I'm saying? So we all they always identify with these five uh, civilized tribes, as the Europeans will call them, who enslaved and was proud to enslave African people. 
And you know yeah. what? Uh, you know what? Uh, I was uh, let me let me find it real quick, bro. No, I was okay. just gonna say one thing. You got it. If 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 somebody if if one of these Aboriginal brothers if they say that they were from a tribe other than them five, I may get them the benefit of disbelief. I may I may listen, but when somebody say they Cherokee, I'm just like, no, I'm not listening to you no more because that's that's the most common one. Everybody ain't no damn Cherokee. Everybody can't be from the Cherokee. And if you ask nine out of ten people, that's what they're gonna say is Cherokee. Go ahead, boss. My hands are tied at the moment, y'all. But Sean or anybody that can share a screen, will y'all do me this favor and we can run down this again? Because this is going to go right into what uh, Kofi just spoke on and what we're speaking on. Can somebody please pull up the Treaty of New York 1790? Sean going to have to do it because I ain't, I ain't on my phone. I'm a, I mean, I ain't on my laptop. I'm on my phone. In, in, in short, for the audience. And I did this over on Danny's channel a couple of days ago. That treaty is where you see the emergence of the five civilized tribes. This is where they talk about land. They, they make a contract about that. One of the key elements to that, though, and you got to go down to Florida with these creeks. They set up a buffer zone in north central Florida. That buffer zone was predicated on capturing African runaway slaves. So a part of that contract really brought them in to capture us. But at the same time, all the free blacks there, you got your uh, St. Augustine, your Fort Mose, you got Fort Negro, um, you had Black Abraham, he had his own Cimarron town established. We was helping different bands of the Creek Nation. I think you had the Red Creeks um, was one aspect of them and a few other ones. We was helping them fight to maintain the land. Still, most of us got put into bondage, especially when they started seeing what the economic practices was to it. When they started seeing what kind of resources they can pull in towards becoming an individual, uh, branching into a capitalistic society, versus their native ways of being more of a social group and had a shared economy. There's so much to this story that we have to unpack, but it's very, very simple, y'all. None of this stuff is hidden. I don't know what they are talking about with secret documents and paying all this money for it. I'm a single parent of three. I have a son with autism. I'm not allowed to work and I come across stuff like this daily with the smallest of a budget. And the only time I buy something is if I'm buying a book. So I don't understand where they're going with all of this. It's just creating confusion, playing on people's emotions, playing on people's ignorance, and creating a gullible crowd to collect funds at this point. That's what I've seen. And that's how I see it. And that, that's, that's exactly what it is. I mean, I'm not going to mention one brother name, this brother name. But that, that's exactly what he's doing. He is scamming the people. He is talking about these secret documents. Uh, 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 make sure you subscribe or check out his Patreon. And he wants you to donate money for his research. Talking about these secret documents, these thousands of dollars that this man has talked about. He is paying is a lot. That money is going into his pocket. A lot, like you said, a lot of this information is free information. You can run across this thing all the time. It's 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 um it's not a secret, man. You know, and Danny gave a uh, a great uh, example on how to research and find primary documents. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I mean, like I'm saying, it's just a big old scam, you know, playing on people intelligence, man. That that's all they doing, man. And it, it's just well, I'm not gonna say all because I don't know about these other guys. This guy I'm speaking about is because when he surfaced on the scene, I got to kind of look and try to see what was going on, what 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 was the big old fuss about this individual, why his name is being mentioned a lot, what is uh, you know, what is what is he presenting on his show? Where is he getting his information from? What is he, you know, what is this guy actually talking about? So these other guys, you know, I'm I'm not familiar with these other guys that just, 
you know, I know y'all probably familiar with them, but I don't look at a lot of YouTube things. So I don't know half of what these folks be talking about or what they be mentioning or, you know, how they're making their money, how they're making the funds. But I know this guy here, he is actually scamming the people. He's taking that money and putting that money in his pocket. Here go, here go. Um, maybe, maybe in 2017, 2016, I can't remember exactly what year it was. This little colored boy right here got interviewed. I can't give up what tribe interviewed me. They interviewed me and put me in a documentary because at the time they were trying to increase the tribe's um, nutritional plans. So they came up with a program to disperse food to people, anybody that wanted to be involved. Word got out that I was taking that food and was giving it to churches giving it to schools. I was giving it to widows and widowers. Once they found out what I was doing with the food, they wanted to interview me. Now I wasn't allowed to say too much about what I was doing, but this went all, this documentary went to the Supreme Court. And what I'm saying is, look at what I'm saying. Here I am with nothing and I'm trying my best to find ways to actually help people. I didn't charge none of these places for what I was doing. I didn't say tell people what I was doing, but it's a small town, word traveled fast. Versus someone sitting back and saying, only me is giving you this information, so donate to my Patreon. Like, if you already got the information, what you need money for? Why ain't you helping others at this point? It doesn't make any sense to me at all. Right. And what I was about to say is if it's such a damn secret and you need money, how you get how you get your hands on it if it's such a secret? How you how you come to the knowledge to, to get it? Who who put that bug in your ear? And if you just doing research, show people how to research and find it themselves. Why are you charging people to find some information that you ain't even got? It's a big secret. Where are you getting the secret from? I can see if it was somebody like Drop the bug in his ear, you know, and it's, you know, it's a real live mouth to ear secret. He talking about some shit anybody could research. A lot of people ain't got good research skills. And shout out to uh, the brother True Historian for dropping Come that on. knowledge. Come on, y'all. For dropping what's that the, knowledge, man. What's been, what's been the history of people in this country who stood up for social uh, ju justice and equality? with our type of pigment, when you do stuff and you start speaking on things that you ain't supposed to, do we not instantly get shut down, shot at, arrested? How come he ain't got in trouble yet? Sometimes common sense is all you need to really, really analyze a lot of these situations. And I'm not saying that statement to discourage anybody because we still have to be brave and keep uh, moving forward. But just take that into consideration. And that's why you don't see too many vocal nowadays, which is another conversation we should have. We really need to debunk that kill the messenger theory because we shouldn't be fr afraid to say, hey, these are issues we, we have. These are our strengths. We should no longer be afraid of that. The ancestors that came before us fought way too hard for us to turn around and be silent, not vote, not get education to run to the streets and call ourselves savage when they were spending their whole life to prove that they was human beings. It is completely insulting to all the progress we've made. But let, let me uh, go back to Sonic, so I don't wanna get long-winded. Sean, where you at? I'm right here, man. I'm ready to end the show. I'm letting y'all get y'all stuff off. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can go ahead. All right, I'm finna I'm gonna hold on. All right, so chat, we out, man. Again, Shimmer Motep going peace. I don't know who going live tonight. I do not know. However, y'all enjoy yourselves. Have a good one. Kofi, you got something you want to say? Nah, man. Um, Sutek supposed to be up today. Uh, supposed to be. I guess he's gonna go up. Uh. Today, so uh, be on the lookout today at 6 okay. p.m. Hopefully, uh, Brother Sutek will be presenting. Um, today, I forgot the name of the presentation. He, if he's still in there, he probably can type uh, type it in there. 
Okay, yeah, look forward to, you know what I'm saying, Sue Tech coming back. Doing this thing. So, all right, we are black people. Catch y'all in, in about an hour and a half. Peace.